Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. We are continuing with my DVD collection. We are on the Japanese movies, so let's let's keep rolling here. I'm hoping to finish box one of three tonight, so let's do it. Very interesting set here. And that is... The Genius Party and Genius Party Beyond box set. These are two anime anthology films. So you have, I believe, 12 short films over two full discs. And one of the directors here is Shinichiro Watanabe, who directed Cowboy Bebop and uh, Samurai Champloo. Now these are very visually arresting films. <clears throat> very, very creative films. And... Uh, it's one of those things that's almost kind of like Robot Carnival, except with souped-up animation, like higher-quality, modernized animation to them. Some very weird stuff in here, some very interesting stuff. It's definitely, if you're, if you're feeling like on the wild side a little bit with regard to your anime selection for the evening, you know, watching both of these back-to-back, -back, there's some pretty awesome stuff in here. I really, I actually enjoyed the second one more than the first one, a little bit more. But uh, this set, I think, is a little bit more expensive now. It's not as widely available as it used to be. So, in any case, I'm sure you could find a way to watch it or acquire it. And these are so, uh, so creative. I might actually do a separate review of this uh, in the future. I know my anime uh, reviews are less popular than my other reviews, but I know a chunk of you out there like those, so I will continue to do them. But Genius Party, the box set, if you can find it, get it especially if you're a fan of anime very cool <clears throat> ah yes i covered this in my asian horror playlist god's left hand devil's right hand uh this is the wacky one where tetsuo himself tomorrow uh taguchi is like a killer and after he kills people he draws the murder scenes and shows them to his daughter to send her send her to, to bed at night yeah, pretty wacky film. Pretty cool, though. I liked it. Directed by Shizuke Kaneko, the director of the, the Death Note films. Check out my Asian horror reviews from 2006 if you want my thoughts on that one. We have a lot of horror films in the back section here of this box, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i start moving near the end of this video. You'll see. Now, my Godzilla collection isn't nearly as big as it should be, and I will rectify that in the future. But I do have my favorite one. Yes. Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Giant monsters. All out attack. Another Shizuke Kaneko film. And this movie is just glorious. It is a glorious feat of Godzilla madness. The special effects are great. The storyline is more mystical, which, which I really liked. It has, like, folklore uh, in it. And, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, this movie is highly entertaining. If you have not seen Godzilla, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, check it out. This one came out in 2001, I believe. So, yes, watch it. Another Godzilla movie I have, which a lot of people don't know about or don't have. I had to buy this in order to watch all of them when I went on my Godzilla marathon a few years ago. And that's Godzilla vs. Biolante. Now this one's pretty unique. This is a unique entry in the franchise because Godzilla fights this like monstrous, horrific plant. It's almost like uh, Audrey 2 from, uh, oh come on, what's that horror comedy musical? Little Shop of Horrors, if it was mutated into a giant like beast. That's basically what Godzilla fights and it's pretty sweet. This, was, this one was made, like, in the 80s, I think, and it has a real, like, dark aesthetic to it. This is about as close to a horror film as, as the Godzilla films uh, would get. So, uh, yeah, this one's pretty cool. Godzilla vs. Biolante. If you want your Godzilla in, in a little bit of a different uh, dilemma. And then, finally, I have a two-disc set of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. And Godzilla and Mothra, The Battle for Earth. These came out, I think, in 91 and 92. Uh, so, uh, 
whereas uh, Giant Monsters All Out Attack was, I think, 2001. Now, this is a two-disc box set, and these are two very entertaining films. Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. This movie is so stupid and cheesy. It just it works on that level, man. I was laughing quite a bit when I saw that one. There's, like, they go back in time, I think, at one point, and there's this little, like, I'm not even going to get into it. It's it's hilarious. And then Godzilla and Mothra, The Battle for Earth, is more of a traditionally good quality kaiju film. So you get both aspects here. This is an excellent quality. If you could find this DVD set for 10 bucks or less, it's just, it's a steal. And they're two of the better Godzilla films in the whole franchise. So yes, I definitely like this one. Our next film is a film called Goemon from 2009. This is from the same director as Caserne. And it's basically about, you know, it's kind of a mythological slant uh, in Japanese history. It's set during the 1500s, and you have this, this thief, Goemon, who fights against uh, some bad guys. I guess that's all I'll tell you. Now, just like Caserne, the visuals are outstanding. Very, very creative visually. Uh, these two films together would make a head-exploding double feature if you had not seen either one. Uh, you know, they both have their flaws. Uh, you know, I won't get into that into detail here, but I will review both of these in the future, I promise. Again, these are two that i got to rewatch again. It's been too long since I've seen these. This is a pretty cool film. The, the lead actor, I forgot his name, but uh, he's really good in this. Very uh, charismatic personality. Set designs are fantastic, too. Goemon. <clears throat> now, our next film here is an anime. And that is Goku. Midnight Eye. Now I gotta consult my notes on this one here. This one... Let's see. Goku Midnight Eye, where are you? Alright, so it's an OVA, original video animation, two episodes, 90 minutes total, about a detective who uses a high-tech eyeball and a retractable staff to take down some bad guys. So this is some pretty creative and violent action to it. There's some cool robots, a dude with some deadly psychic abilities. The animation is quite colorful. Most of it takes place at nighttime, so it's a nice little uh, stylistic uh, cue there. I enjoy this one, Goku Midnight Eye. It's kind of like one of those old school anime films that you get some good violence, you probably get some nudity in here if I remember correctly. It's fun stuff, Goku Midnight Eye. If you want your anime a little darker and, and bloodier, no nonsense anime. Now, continuing on with darker stuff, you got the Gonin Saga here. Gonin 1 and 2. This is Takashi Ishii's gangster films, or at least two of them from the mid-90s. The first one is a really nasty, gritty gangster flick involving men. The second one is a nasty, gritty gangster flick involving women. And most of the characters in these movies do not turn out well. You know, this is, this is some pretty dark stuff. So if you want, like, a Yakuza film that uh, is really kind of, I wouldn't say hard to sit through, but it'll definitely make you feel a little uncomfortable at times with its violence and tone, check out the first two Gonin films. They released another one recently that's also pretty good, but it doesn't get quite as dark as, as this one, or these two, I should say. And since it's in a two-disc DVD set, it's probably a pretty good value. <clears throat> Our next film I am going to cover in my Asian horror playlist, that's Grateful Dead. I think from 2013. This is the the UK release from uh, Third Window Films, which is a very good distribution uh, company in the UK who releases some pretty solid Japanese films. This one I think is... Uh, I better check my notes on this one too, just to make sure. 
A young woman from a broken family becomes a stalker of other lonely people and eventually becomes obsessed with an elderly man. So this has some black humor in it, and it gets progressively darker as it moves along. So I will explain more in my Asian Horror Playlist from 2013, but this DVD has some pretty good... Uh, well, it's got an interview with the director as a special feature, which is nice. The lead actress, Kumi Takeuchi, was very good in this. So, don't worry, I'll cover this in a little bit more detail when we get to 2013 in the playlist. Now, to continue with the theme of nasty movies, guilty of romance, Sion Sono. This, this is one of the few films in Sono's filmography that I would just say is a straight-up exploitation film. The first, like, half of this movie is basically just a straight-up softcore porno i mean it's it's just filthy this movie's filthy <laughs> and that's in terms of sono if when i say it's filthy in sono's uh uh streak you know it's filthy but the actresses give really good performances and it does get more a little bit more interesting and nuanced as it moves on during the second half because when i was first watching this the first 40 minutes i'm like come on man you gotta you gotta give me give me something else here, and it does, and I enjoy this, and I think it would probably improve if I watch it again. And uh, this one has interviews with the lead actress, full length audio commentary with Jasper Sharp. I should watch that the commentary. So yeah, this movie is it is good. I know it sounded like I didn't like it, but uh, it was definitely about as exploitative as a Sono film can get, and that's saying something. <clears throat> All right, got a few horror films here coming up. We got another Sono film, Hair Extensions. This is one of Sono's lighter films, even for a horror film. It, uh, it's, it's definitely one of his easiest watches, and I thought it was a good thing. Very entertaining movie. Shaki Kuriyama is the lead role. Check out my review of my, uh, in my Asian horror playlist from 2007, I, or seven, I believe this came out. And uh, yeah, it's about killer hair extensions that are basically mined from a dead woman's body and sold on the street so the hair extensions themselves kill people. It's pretty pretty entertaining. Pretty entertaining stuff. All right, I got the all region release of hair extensions before it came out in the US. <clears throat> oh, this is the 2013 version of Hanako-san, another movie that I will cover later in my asian horror playlist this one surprised me this was a blind buy i just wanted to watch a japanese horror film uh in october for you know halloween time and this was surprisingly good the 2013 version it has like it was very professionally made very nice atmosphere creepy atmosphere to it this is a well executed film that will surprise you and i'll get to more details again in my playlist All right, our next one here is a wacky one from Takashi Miike, and that is Happiness of the Katakuris. This is a remake of The Quiet Family uh, that Ji-Woon Kim made in 98, I think. This came out in 2001. You know, a group of people are in their, uh, they run like a vacation inn, and due to accidents, or the people who keep visiting them keep dying, so they just cover it up. And this one is more of a musical con uh, musical. Than the Quiet Family one, uh, the Quiet Family was. So this is one of the rare instances where a remake is just as good as the original, I think, and it feels like a completely different movie. It it really does. So I would recommend watching both the Quiet Family and this one. It's good stuff. There's some hilarious uh, songs in this, by the way. All right, our next one here is Harder Revenge Millie Part 2, Bloody Battle. Now, I watched Part 1, and it was not very good. Uh, but for some reason, I, I, I read positive reviews of Part 2, uh, Bloody Battle, and it wasn't available to rent, so I said, screw it. I'll blind buy it. And you know what? It was pretty good. It was actually pretty good. Definitely better than the first one. I would say skip the first Harder Revenge Millie film and just watch Bloody Battle. 
it's a longer film. It's 70 minutes long, which is actually longer than the first one. And there's a lot more action. And the action is well staged. This is a good B-grade action movie, man. And uh, the actress is, is quite attractive as well, as you can see. So, Bloody Battle is worth watching. The first one, I would skip. Another film I've covered in my Asian playlist, that's Haze from Shinya Tsukamoto. Very interesting movie. A guy wakes up. He's in a really claustrophobic, like, I can't even... It's, he's like thrown into a series of really claustrophobic uh, claustrophobic passageways where all you could do is like crawl through them. He's trying to figure a way out. Definitely one of the most claustrophobic films ever made because it just doesn't let up. You know what I mean? You're, you feel stifled in, you know, the entire time. <clears throat> it's hard to breathe while watching it, which is good. So yes, this is, this is a, a good movie. Difficult to find on DVD. I don't even think this one had subtitles. To, oh, it does. Yeah, it does. My version does have it because it's the, the Region 2 uh, British release, the, the UK release. So try to find that one if you're going to buy it. All right. Now here's another Ozu film. Shouldn't be a surprise to you. But this one kind of uh, is evidence against people who say that all his films are the same. That's a hen in the wind. This one, I think, is about a, a mother who uh, resorts to prostitution to, to feed her family while the husband is away. Uh, I think it might be away at war. Yeah. And uh, that causes problems. So this this is a pretty dark film for Ozu. It's one of his darker ones. If you think, uh, you know, if, you're, if you don't feel like a family drama with Ozu, you want to go for something a little darker in terms of the drama, this is a good one to check out. It's a good film. This is a movie I covered on my channel in a full-length review. That is The Hidden Blade, an absolutely outstanding samurai film. Arguably the my favorite out of every samurai film I've seen. It's up there. You know, check out my full-length review if you uh, if you want coverage on this. You want a full my whole ideas about it. It has some behind-the-scenes stuff on it. A lot of trailers and stuff, but it's worth getting just for the movie alone. It's great, really good stuff. All right, we got a whole slew of horror films coming up. We're going to mow through these. We got Hide and Go Kill, which, again, I've covered already in my playlist. I like this one. I think it's underrated. I think it has a nice atmosphere to it. Very nice. We got Hide and Go Kill 2, Creepy Hide and Seek, which I think is superior to the original and is, again, very atmospheric. This, these are the ones where you like you play that game. You play hide and seek with ghosts alone in your house. So it's pretty creepy stuff, I think. Not not a whole lot of character development or story, but that's okay. Sometimes you're just not feeling a story. I, I, sometimes I just don't want a story. I just want the atmosphere. Now our next one here is. Honto ni Ata Kawai Hanashi 2012. It doesn't even have an English title. A blind buy from, uh, I think it was Yes Asia. No subtitles. Don't even bother really marking this down on your list. I'll cover it in a little bit more detail in my, in my playlist. Asian horror playlist. But, uh, you know, it's one of those ones that it doesn't really carve out its own identity. The ghost girl shows up quite a bit. Uh, but it was still okay. It was still watchable. So, you know, don't worry about making it a priority. Mm, I'll cover it a little bit more, though, later. Bad Blind Buy time coming up. Bad Blind Buy. And the name of the film is Blinds. <laughs> the Blinds. The Blinds was a bad blind buy. Say that ten times real fast. Yeah, this stunk. I think it's about a girl who witnesses something from her from her window or something a brutal murder just skip this go watch rear window for the 50th time one of the best criterion releases is coming up this i think is one of their best releases i was waiting for years for this film to get a legitimate release cuz i had only seen it like online on like a streaming it might have been on youtube for a while before uh, criterion swapped up the distribution rights house Nobuhiko Obayashi's absolutely insane haunted house movie from
from Japan in the 1970s. And uh, this has some good special features on it. Very nice quality, as Criterion is known for. Check out my Asian horror playlist uh, from the 1970s for my thoughts on this. This movie will make your head explode. It's so crazy. And finally, <clears throat> I think a somewhat underrated horror film from... I think this came out in 99, didn't it? The Hypnotist, yes. This one had a pretty, pretty awesome uh, premise. A fantastic twist. A really interesting kind of ending. And uh, check out my Asian horror playlist. From, I think, 99 this came out. It's about a hypnotist who's killing people. And it, it, he does it in pretty, pretty interesting ways. Some one of the some great twists in this movie too. Check out the hypnotist. So that is it for today. We mowed through box one, but we got two whole boxes left. So there's there's plenty more to come. I will see you next time.